new market was profitable. Arthur told me how you left your message. And when I asked him where his medicine was, he said you poured it away. All I poured away was opium and bromide. Oh, but that's how it works in London, isn't it? Every boss has to have a mad dog at his side. <clears throat> yes, somebody who can't be predicted. Somebody mad in the head. You know, the pub back then was obviously the meeting place. It still is. What makes the pub so special? Very good beers on tap, ales on tap, bitters on tap. I don't drink any of those, <laughs> but I like men that do. <laughs> no, I can, I can pretend to like pubs <laughs> as much as you like. <laughs> I don't. All right, there we go, I've said it. We have nothing to fear from the proposed business expansion so long as we stick together. After the first few weeks, nine-tenths of what we do in London will be legal. The other tenth is in good hands. Isn't that right, Arthur? That's right. Now, some of you in this room have expressed your reservations. Fair enough. Any of you want no part in the future of this company, walk out the door. Well, I just I imagine being in a pub in the 20s when there was no television, no jukeboxes, no internet, nobody on phones. People just had to talk to each other. Yeah. It's quite punitive if you get your face slashed, if you if you behave in a rowdy fashion. I, I, that aspect of it, I... It's not so strong for you. No. No, I not the pub fighting bit. No. You just leave at 9.30. I can't sleep before <laughs> closing. Yeah. yeah. What's the best city for pubs and why? Oh, well, God. I mean, I'm an Irishman, so clearly I'm not going to say. Britain. <laughs> I'm going to say Cork City. Yeah. Right now. Go raise your chickens. For those of you with ambition, the expansion process begins tomorrow. <laughs>